Hey, True Believers, Anglantine here with another episode of Comic Book Origins, where we take a look at the very first appearance of any comic book superhero, villain, or death. And since Halloween's right around the corner at this recording, we're looking at a whole bunch of villains. In this case, we're looking at Judge Dredd's greatest villain, or at least one of them, Judge Death, created by John Wagner and Brian Bolin in 1980. He is the leader of a group called the Dark Judges. They are undead law enforcers from an alternate dimension called Dead World, where all life has been declared a crime since only the living can commit crimes. Usually we start off looking at the cover, 2000 AD tornado, and there's a guy riding a dragon unicorn. Absolutely nothing to do with Judge Dredd or death, so we're going to move on. Judge Dredd. In Mega City 1, giant metropolis of the 22nd century, a criminal was escaping from the law. And we do indeed see a criminal as he's laughing at the fact that he's getting away from dr judges. He does see one. He's like, oh man, okay, you got me. But as he approaches, he's like, wait a second, you don't look like a regular judge. And said judge puts his hand straight into his chest. Ladies and gentlemen, the very first appearance of Judge Death. My name is Death. I have come to judge you. Later, we see that the judges discover the body. One guy's telling Judge Dredd that he found something underneath the guy's fingernails. Judge Dredd notes that it smells like decay around there, but to get the tissue down to the lab, and when they're at the lab, they do notice that the skin under the fingernails is in an advanced state of decomposition. Decomposition, if I were to say that properly. I'm not talking about days or even years. This skin has been dead for centuries. Impossible. If this skin isn't Tiny's, then it's got to be his attacker's. Then all I could say is, we have a mighty strange killer walking around this city. It's the strange killers you have to watch out for. They might actually do something crazy. He heard the sound echoing through the concrete caverns of the city. It drew him like a magnet. The one sound which could stir feelings in that cold, dead heart. The sound of laughter, of life, that hated sound and we see Judge Death is drawn to what looks like a club playing dance music. So Judge Death isn't exactly looking for intelligent life. Judge Death attacks the DJ, telling him, Dying is easy. I just put my hand through your chest and squeeze. At that moment, Judge Dredd gets an alert that there's something wrong at the club. The judges all gather together. They burst open the doors to find everybody's dead. And once again, Judge Dredd notes the smell of decay. There he is, dressed like a judge or a mockery of one. Have you come to witness judgment? We've come to slam your butt in a pokey, Mr. Ross. Stay back. Ross moves forward towards him, but Judge Death swings at him. His hand sliced right through Ross's neck. Rapid fire, blow his bones away. He's getting up. Nothing could get up after that. Who is this creep? You cannot kill what does not live. I have come to bring law to this city. My law. The Law of Death. I figure since that's a five-page first appearance, we're going to continue with the story in issue number 150. Now, once again, the cover has absolutely zero to do with, uh, except for the fact that it says featuring Judge Dredd. That's it. Moving on. Judge Dredd, a strange and terrifying creature, stalks the future city. Judge Death. We're blowing chunks off him, but he keeps coming. You cannot kill what does not live. I have come to judge this city, to bring you law, the law of death. His fingers piercing Runciman's neck like it was custard. Judge Dredd was in charge of the mega city lawman. Bullets don't stop him. Switch to incendiary. Rapid fire. He's gone up like a human torch. Not human. They notice that the fire has destroyed Judge Death's body, but the spirit rises. Don't look at it. It's getting thicker. Lawbreakers, you have delayed me. That is all. This city is evil, but I will cleanse it. All will be judged. And then it was gone, leaving only the shattered ruin of the nightclub and the bodies of the judged. It just blew away. My grud, Dredd. What kind of monster is this? I wish I knew, McKay. There's too much we don't know about Judge Death. We'd better start finding out and quick. It doesn't look like he's taking any prisoners. They bring the body to headquarters, and Judge Dredd calls PSYOPs, where Judge Anderson shows up to try to make contact. She reaches out. Oh, man, it's strong if you could feel the power. You wish to speak with me? It's his voice. Who are you? 
What do you want here? Have you got a moment to accept some Watchtower magazines and talk about Jesus Christ, our Savior? I have crossed dimension span to bring justice to your world. You are all guilty. You must be punished according to the law. What law? What crime have we committed? You call yourself judges, and you dare to ask me that? The crime is life. Oh, come on now. I wouldn't say it's the greatest thing, but it's not that bad. Long ago, judges on my world saw that all crime was committed by the living. Therefore, life itself was made illegal. We judged our people, all of them. We wiped the curse of life from our world, and now I have come to judge yours. The sentence is death. It will be carried out. A creature from a warped world where life is a crime. It's strange to know that Twitter is universal. Judge Anderson finishes up and goes home, but while she's at her house, she starts to feel effects from touching Judge Death's mind. Don't go to sleep, Judge Anderson. That voice again. Open the window, Anderson. Let me in. Duck! Sigh. Don't run from me. I know you. I'm too strong for you. Can't fight him. Must do what he says. I needed a receptive mind, Anderson. You're mine. Now you could be my arms, my legs. We will be partners in death. And much like the first two chapters of the very first appearance of Judge Death, the issue number 151 has absolutely nothing to do with anything we're talking about. Moving on. Judge Dread. Judge Death, a terrifying creature from a world where life is a crime, has come to Judge Mega City 1. Death's body has been burnt to ash, but his spirit form has entered the mind of Judge Anderson, a side division telepath. You cannot resist me, Anderson. We will be partners in death. Now, in the Justice Department's morgue, Anderson, what are you doing with that creature's body? Keep away from me. I can't help myself. Judge Death is strong enough to make Anderson kick a man through a window. Judge Dredd is first on the scene. Judge Anderson took our meat wagon. She had the creature's body. She acted like she was possessed. Anderson's a telepath. The creature must have controlled her mind. And we see Anderson driving. Don't fight me, Anderson. I am too strong for you. Get lost, Creepy says as she rams the ambulance into a telephone pole. This is foolish, Anderson. Now you must walk. It is not far. Yeah, we could see the curb from here. No? No, that's... Not working? Okay. I didn't think that joke warranted a head, a headshot. Uh, I just went out with it. Okay, it's not even my joke. It's Annie Hall. It's Woody Allen. So what are you saying? There's not a lot of Judge Death Annie Hall crossover like you wouldn't go watch that movie? Yeah, I'm the jerk. Okay, let's keep moving on. We see Judge Anderson carrying Judge Death's body trying to fight him. At the Hall of Justice, other side division telepaths were listening for messages from Anderson, and they get one. It's very distinct, but it's coming through time and time again. It's just one word. Boing. Boing? <laughs> you mean the miracle spray? That's crazy. Anderson wouldn't send it unless it was important, but... My doc, I think I understand. As Dread Squad races through the city, more information was coming in. We've got a final fix from Anderson. Fourth floor, low-rise Connapt building on the fourth floor. This is the place. I'll handle them alone. When I'm inside, seal the door. I want it airtight. We see Death, Spirit, and Judge Anderson staring at the remains of Judge Death's body. The dead fluids heal my body. Soon I will occupy it and continue my work, Judge Anderson. Think again, Judge Dredd says as he shoots the casings. Again you defy me. It is useless. I can create another body. The door is sealed, Judge Death. You cannot get out. But he's re-entering Anderson. Anderson haymakers Judge Dredd across the jaw because for some reason he didn't see it. Legitimate question here. Did they teach the judges to fight? Because he just took, uh, I don't know. Anyway, good shot from the judge. It uh, threw him back a little bit. Now, Dredd, do it. The Boing Tin. And Judge Dredd sprays Anderson. The miracle plastic swelled around Anderson. Grud, what on earth? You can't kill death. We had to trap him. There was only one way, and Anderson realized it. He's trapped in Anderson's head, encased in Boing. We can't ever risk Judge Death breaking free. Anderson can never come out of there. And she knew it. Her bravery will be remembered. The plastic cocoon? 
was shaped with a special Boeing cutters and placed in a position of honor in the Justice Department's Hall of Heroes, the menace of Judge Death would never again be let loose upon Mega City. And we see Judge Anderson in her cocoon. Supreme sacrifice, Judge Anderson. A monster dwells within her. Wow, so there you go, gang. The very first appearance of Judge Death. This is brand new to me. The first time I read the story, and I've got to say it was pretty darn good. Yeah, there's a little bit of silliness into it, but it's comic books, and there's silliness in comic books all the time. And uh, wow, yeah, I got to say, I'm I'm usually not a huge fan of Judge Dredd. Like, I've read some stories, but um, I was never familiar with this. I wasn't really familiar where Judge Death came from or what his origins were, but now, dang, that, that is nice. I like this one. Anyway, what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like and share. Get word out about this channel. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe, but more mostly ring that notification bell and make sure your notifications are on all. And if you haven't done it already, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi, drop a dollar in the tip jar. Like, thank you. Everyone who's already done that, and to everybody, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching. Mm -hmm.